Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. It's been a while since we've been able to broadcast on the main Logos Media channel. Hopefully things are working well tonight. It looks like it's up in broadcasting and uh, wasn't sure if I was going to be able to do a show tonight. We've been in the middle of moving, so things have been hectic. This will uh, likely be the very last show done out of the kitchen. And in fact, most of the house is empty. But uh, the power is still not on at the new house because uh, the power company messed things up. So uh, hopefully that'll be on tomorrow or the next day. But uh, anyway, we've got a good show tonight. We're going into part two of Islam versus the Jews with Lloyd DeYoung. Lloyd, welcome. Hi, Jan. Thanks for having me on. And uh, let's see, this is part seven of this series, and I think this, well, well, we had tried to wrap up the series last week, and uh, hopefully this will be the last of this series, and then we're also going to be doing an, another series on Judaism as well, and uh, there should be plenty of uh, good information for that series for uh, folks to dig into. There's such controversial topics, so, uh, you know, hopefully we'll be able to drive some interest and uh, get people excited about the shows. Uh, what are we thinking? We're probably thinking uh, three shows for the next series, Lloyd. Um, well, we said the same about Islam. Right. So, you know, expect six to ten or so, you know. But um, uh, I think there's enough at least three episodes. Um, you know, the very controversial people have said, how come you're on talking about Judaism? Well, we did say weeks ago that we do plan to do a show on Judaism. In, indeed. And, uh, well, you know, I, I didn't post a notice over on the backup channel that the show is here tonight. So hopefully people find it over here. I don't know. Without doing a video, there's not really any way to just post a note over there for people to, to come over here to find the uh, show hey justin hey michael hey everybody who found their way here it looks like uh people are starting to come in we're we're just getting started we haven't really kicked it off yet but uh again this is part two of islam versus the jews that we weren't able to finish last week so welcome everybody and uh so we're just going to kick it off here uh we've got plenty of material to cover and we don't want to make a part eight for islam if we can avoid it yeah. <laughs> right, Lloyd. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. Um, especially for me, it's now 1 a.m. in the morning. It was 2 a.m. before your time changed. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it's a bit of a sacrifice. Is, is it uh, worse at 1 a.m. or at 2 a.m. for you? Uh, actually, worse at 1 because I get less sleep beforehand. Really? Oh, there's yeah. my notes just went on screen for the show. All right, so uh, let's see here. Well, sorry about that. Yeah, I know it's hard. I guess it would be hard to go to sleep at like seven or eight at night to uh, get up at one for the show. Yeah, you yeah, know. So yeah, just um, anything, any questions or comments you have regarding last week's show? Anything that you want to bring up? Not my, not really in particular. Um, it's been. Uh, interesting watching people's responses of course and they typically don't uh you know most you know it, either they they're people either post very positive comments or they just attack and the attacks are starting to tone down a bit and by the way we do have since the last time i was able to broadcast on this channel we do have about uh 10,000 new subscribers and we have about five and a half thousand in the last uh, two weeks that are new so welcome all of you noobs and uh, welcome Mark I see Mark there in the chat welcome Mr. Winters and everybody it's good to see you found your way over here it's I'm glad that it's posting I'm surprised they even turned this feed on uh, a month and a half before my my penalty time is up and, of course, uh, Joe Rogan and everybody else is allowed to post stuff about Alex Jones. But I can't post my interview with Alex Jones telling kids not to do drugs. So. Are you sure you shouldn't be using a, a pseudonym when you say that? <laughs> yeah, Mr. Well, it's a pseudonym. Toe Rogan, I guess, is the pseudonym now. 
<laughs> so yeah so uh you know a lot of you probably didn't know that we had the backup channel i posted a video about it quite a bit ago but um you know i suppose i needed to post like a one or two minute video every week to let people know where the uh, you know backup channel is but you know i would recommend all of you subscribe to both channels so that if you know one goes down again people can jump on the uh other channel and still be able to find us so of course this is a very important series i don't even remember where we left off last week lloyd so we should probably just uh get busy with it okay let me just rearrange my screens sure you're gonna do a share screen now yeah i'm just busy arranging my my second monitor um okay new screens are arranged um, yeah, sure. So, so let me just do a quick recap. Last week, we discussed the um, basically Islam, the history of Islam from its own source material, from its own books, uh, being the Hadith and the Sirah, which is the biography of Muhammad, the official biography of Muhammad um, by Ibn Ishaq and Ibn Isham. And we discussed his treatment of the Jews of Arabia. So the Jews were, according to the Muslim source texts, the very first victims of Muhammad. He uh, killed them, he attacked them, he besieged them, he starved them, he killed their men, he raped their women, he stole their property, he took their houses, he even took their land, um, expelled them, ultimately Christians and Jews from Arabia. And uh, we also discussed the Islamic claim over Jerusalem, the source of that claim, which is the night journey, when Muhammad got in a winged horse or winged camel and flew to the furthest mosque. This is in 632. The mosque was built in Jerusalem in 691. So 60 years after Muhammad's death, he flew, well, sorry, he died in 632. The mosque was built in 691. So while Muhammad was alive, he claims that he flew to the mosque in Jerusalem, which was not there. He claims he prayed at the temple in Jerusalem, which had been destroyed 500 years before. And um, this is the source of the claim of Islam over Jerusalem. Um, we discussed how Aisha's wife, Mah um, uh, Muhammad, Aisha's wife, said that he did not leave the house. He was there. He remained at home. Um, and um, we then also discussed some of the some basic history of, for instance, the 4,000 Jews that were killed in Grenada in Spain in one day when... Um, when a Jew got to a high position under the vizier, but um, when he died, he lost the protect. Well, when the vizier died, his son took over, and there was a pogrom against 4,000 Jews that were killed in one day during the golden age of Islam. Um, but that, to, to cover actually that golden age in the Andalusia, Spain will be an entirely separate episode. Okay, so, so, so that basically is a brief wrap up of last week. Could you uh, tip your camera down just a little bit more? Sorry. Tilted downwards? Yeah. There you go. Is that better? Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So let's, let's head drum there. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah. Also, there were a number of, uh, as you noted, the, the comments have definitely toned down. Um, there's far fewer attacks. Uh, there are far fewer people taking offense. I think basically the, the level of detail that I've gone into, given the Islamic citations, my sources are mostly... The Islamic sources themselves, from the Quran, the Hadith, the Sira, the Tafsir, the exegesis, the, uh, the interpretation of the Quran by its major scholars, as well as the Sharia. What I am finding, though, is that a lot of the Islamic apologists are starting to deny their own books. First of all, when you quote something, they'll say it doesn't say what you say. So, kill the Jews, kill the Christians. Apparently, doesn't mean that. It has a different meaning. I'm not sure what it is. I'm sure they. Would like to tell me but but also then they will start to claim that the hadith are meaningless they will claim that the sharia is fuzzy and that there's no orthodoxy effectively they say there's no orthodoxy because it's all opinion well if islam has no orthodoxy if it's all opinion then what that person says is merely his opinion and it's not orthodox so why should we listen to him that means you can make it up as you go so um you know i and also, I've been using the site Islam QA, which we discovered, which we covered before. They get roughly between 11 and 14 million hits a day. They're the largest Islamic advice site in the world. 
their imams answer questions which are read by over 300 million people a month. And um, if, you, if you count up 11 to 14 million hits a day, that's 350 million hits a month. And um, often I would reply with answers from Islam QA to people who challenge me in the comments. And one person, for instance, recently was using Islam QA when they were saying things that he liked. But when I quoted Islam QA, which contradicted him on most things, he was, well, they're all wrong. So there's a lot of inconsistency, which is very, you know, there's a lot of inconsistency about people will simply just lie about their own scriptures to defend it. And that's unfortunate, you know, and we've given people a lot of opportunity to post up uh, their questions and whatnot and, um, you know, and their and counter with real citations and facts. We've had maybe two or three people actually attempt that. And then you were able to go through and show them, you know, how it was wrong. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so it's been interesting to watch people's reaction, but it's good to see the resistance dying down. Unfortunately, I don't see some of the uh, former Islamists in the, in the chat tonight. I was hoping that some of them would show up, but <clears throat> we are getting higher view numbers tonight than we have for, you know, the last month and a half with the uh, backup channel. But, you know, it yeah. is what it is when you're running on a backup. I got to I gotta get, you know, figure out a way to get the, the 65, 66,000 subscribers here subscribed to the backup channel too so that, you know, that people get alerted for either one. Yeah, you know. Yeah, so tonight, so, um, so tonight what I'll do is we're going to wrap up on this section which is uh, Islam versus the Jews. And um, yeah, and then of course we've got something else planned as we discussed. So maybe I should share my screen and we can just finish this section. And that is share screen. Here we go, share, main screen. <clears throat> well, we've got already the same ignorant comments, Jews created Islam. We've already covered that and there's no substantiation for that. And, um, you know, the Jews have actually been, especially in Saudi Arabia, have been the largest victims of it. So, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. it, it's sad when people still re regurgitate that stuff. Well, as I said um, last week, I've been given roughly eight different centuries and about six or seven different people or groups that supposedly created Islam. And people are very committed to their particular idea as to who created Islam and when, and all of these contradict each other. So how can they all be correct if these are all, if these are all contradictory sets of ideas, you know, different centuries, different people, it right. makes little sense. Um, and these are people that often when I discuss with them, they actually don't know the texts. They don't know the Islamic texts. They, they, they have no idea about Islam and yet they, they have lots of opinions, which I find a little um, hypocritical. Okay, so I think everyone can see my screen, right? Yeah. Okay, We're I'm just going to move this over. So hopefully I'm not covering. Okay, you know, Jews created Islam, gold. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Okay, so, um, so I've done I've done a slight recap. Um, the previous episode covers in detail what we did last week, so I won't go over all of that again. So briefly, when you do a textual analysis of now. A couple of resources, people that are very, very good authors and researchers uh, would be people like Bill Warner, whom I've learned a great deal from. I've bought a number of his books. Obviously, his videos are on YouTube. Uh, people like Robert Spencer, also very accurate, meticulous. Um, Raymond Ibrahim, excellent researcher, and David, David Wood, of course. And uh, so various people have done a textual analysis of the books of Islam. So the Quran that was written in Mecca, that's the first Quran before the Hijra, before he immigrated, that is 1% anti-Jewish content of its texts, of its words. The Medinan Quran has 17% anti-Jewish content, effectively Jew hatred. Then the Sirah, which is the biographer of Muhammad, has 12% anti-Jewish content. This volume obviously contains the political and military acts of Muhammad. The Hadith, which is all the traditions of Muhammad, have 9% anti-Jewish content, anti-Jew content. And in total for the major books of Islam, the 
total is 9%. Now, I did mention Mein Kampf, if you do a textual analysis of Hitler's book, that has 7% anti-Jew content. So Islam's major texts are even more anti-Jewish than Hitler's work. Okay, now, a couple of words from Mahmoud al-Habash, the PA's most important religious figure. I, I skimmed through this last week, and I'll, I'll take a little bit more time to go through this. He said there is no negotiating the total destruction of the children of Israel. So for him, he said the conflict between Palestinians and Israelis is not a political conflict, but a battle between Islam and the culture of Satan. Now, as I said, the official position of the Israeli government is that this is not a religious fight with the Palestinians and with the Arabs. It is a political issue. Um, but as I said last week, I think that's wrong because for those Muslims that oppose Israel, it is entirely a religious Islamic issue. Now, Al-Ghazali, I've mentioned him numerous times before in previous episodes, we covered him as well. He is regarded as the preeminent Islamic scholar after Muhammad. And he's the one who effectively created the Islamic consensus that we have today that is found in the Sharia. He was at that time, back in 1111, having a fight with a group called the Mutazilites who wanted to reform Islam and make it more like Greek um, thinking, Greek logic, Christianity, but he killed them. And his view became the orthodox view of Islam. So he viewed non-Muslim dhimmis as, okay, sorry, okay. <clears throat> Al-Ghazali viewed non-Muslim dhimmis as a typical Muslim theologian and jurist in the Abbasid Caliphate would, okay? So he incited dhimmi persecution Okay, as Baghdad's Obadiah the proselyte observed in about 1100 AD, he says, Al Muhtadi, the Baghdad Kali from 1075 to 1094, gave power to the vizier Abu Shuja, who required each male Jew should wear a yellow badge on his headgear. Does that sound familiar? And also a piece of lead hanging around his neck, inscribed with the words Dimmi, to signify they had to pay the jizya, the poll tax. It's actually tribute. Jews also had to wear girdles around their waists, which was a piece of cloth that actually distinguished them from non-Jews and Muslims. Abu Shuja further imposed two signs on Jewish women, that to wear a black and a red shoe and a small brass bell on her neck or her shoe to announce the separation of Jewish from Muslim women, from Gentile women. The Gentile, in this case, meaning Muslim women. He assigned cruel Muslim men to spy upon Jewish women to oppress them with curses, humiliation, and spite. The Gentile population mocked all the Jews and they mobbed their children. They beat up the Jews in Baghdad. When a Jew died who had not fully paid up his jizya, the Gentiles did not permit burial until it was paid. If he left nothing, the Gentiles, that would be the Muslims, demanded that other Jews should meet his debt, otherwise they would burn the body. So that was uh, quoted in an article in the American Thinker, the Sufi moderate Al-Ghazali. Sufis are considered moderate, but if you study their history, they are anything but moderates. They're as radical as any other Islamic group. So, Ibn Khatir, he is one of the great Tafsir writers. He explains, in, he explains Quran 261 about the Jews. They were covered with humiliation and misery. They drew on themselves the wrath of Allah. Allah indicates that the children of Israel, Israel were plagued with humiliation and that will continue, meaning it will never cease. They will suffer humiliation at the hands of all who interact with them along with the disgrace that they feel inwardly. So the Jews, another Middle Ages commentator, Abdullah ibn Umar al-Baydawi explains, the Jews are mostly of humiliated and wretched and either of their own accord or out of coercion for fear of having the, the punitive tax doubled. So, any comments so far, Ian? No, uh, not really. And, uh, you know, a lot of this is just recap from last week, so I'm just following along. And, uh, you know, so, people are actually being uh, pretty uh, kind and chill in the uh, chat today. Yeah. So, now, Ibn Khatir even also notes Islamic traditions that predict the end of the world. The Jews will support the false mess messiah, the Dajjal, and the Muslims, along with Jesus, the son of Mary, will kill the Jews, because Jesus will come back at the end times and he will break the cross. He will destroy the church, in other words, destroy Christianity, and he will kill the Jews. This is the idea of the Islamic end times. So 
Muslim, so the in Islam, the end times will be marked by Muslims killing Jews, and that comes from Muhammad himself, who says, and I will go into detail on this particular quote, the hour will not be established until you fight with the Jews, and the stone behind which a Jew will be hiding will say, oh Muslim, there's a Jew behind me, kill him. Now, the Grand Sheikh of Al-Hazar, now Al-Hazar University is the foremost and the oldest, most respected, most prestigious Islamic center in the world. It's over a thousand years old, it's based in Egypt, and their head cleric, which is for Sunni Muslims, of course, called Jews the enemies of Allah, descendants of apes and pigs. The Saudi Sheikh, late Saudi Sheikh, Abdul Rahman al Sudais, Imam of the Mosque in Mecca, said, The Jews are the scum of the human race, the rats of the world, the violators of pacts and agreements, the murderers of the prophets, and the offspring of apes and pigs. These are very common sentiments. If you go through Islamic broadcasts, news broadcasts, um, you look on YouTube that you will find numerous such things. Uh, they're quite blatant about their disdain for Jews and Christians in many cases as well. The current behavior of the brothers of apes and pigs, their treachery, violation of agreements and defiling of holy places is connected with the deeds of their forefathers during the early period of Islam, which proves the great similarity between all the Jews living today and the Jews who lived at the dawn of Islam. Now, I did mention last week that the Quran explicitly mentions Jews and Christians as people that Allah hates, that Muhammad hates, that lie, that have corrupted their own texts, their own books, that refuse to accept Islam. They must be killed. They must be enslaved. Um, so as I mentioned, yes? I want to inter interject right there. And uh, when we get into our series on the Torah and the Talmud, we will see who it was that did that and how you know, how they corrupted things, but we're going to see that the Jews themselves weren't to blame. It was the, it was uh, certain groups of Jews in charge who did the whole thing. It's like blaming every hippie for, well, for getting, for getting MK ultra by the CIA well, and Esalen Institute, you know? Yeah. The specific of this claim though, is that Muslims claim that, that Allah gave the Quran to all of the prophets and all of the prophets rejected it and they invented other religions and they refused to listen to Allah until Muhammad came along and took it on board wholesale and that even Jesus was a prophet of Islam and Jesus, unfortunately from Abraham, Jesus, Moses, all of them were Muslims, but all of them turned on Allah and all of them rejected the Quran and the teachings of Muhammad and Allah. So what they're saying is that um, the corruption is that we edited our books to edit Muhammad out. We deleted his name from the, from the Bible. We removed any reference to Allah and Allah's laws. And basically the prophets all went and made up their own religions. So that, that's specifically what they're claiming here. So, so we said last week, the Quran depicts Jews and it has numerous verses. This is not even all of them, but uh, it's, it's a number of them. Um, where they specifically name and shame the Jews as well as the Christians. I'm just focusing on this in this one um, on the Jews. It says they're evil. They're bent on destroying the Muslims. They're the strongest people in hatred towards Muslims. 582, they fabricate things. They falsely ascribe things to Allah. They claim that Allah's power is limited. They love to listen to lies. 541, they disobey Allah and never observe his commands. Now, these are purely... There's about 20 of them here. They, these are specifically naming the Jews, although there are numerous verses that talk about the people of the book, which is Christians and Jews. So both of us, you know, in terms of Christian culture. And if you're an atheist, you're still a person of the book. Um, so, yeah. They give preference to their own interests over the teachings of Muhammad. They wish evil for people. They try to mislead people, right? They devour wealth by subterfuge. They slander the true religion and they are cursed by Allah. They killed the prophets. They're merciless. They're heartless. I, I gave the citations last week. I read the, 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 you can see them on the screen, but I also gave these last week. I named them all um, chapter and verse last week. They're cowardly. They're miserly. And they were transformed into apes and pigs for breaking the Sabbath. 263, 559, and 7166 in the Quran. They are under Allah's curse, that's 930, and Muslims should wage war on them and subjugate them, 929. And it says in Quran 279, so this is where we ended off last week, I think, uh, or close to, woe to those who write the book with their own hand, and they say, this is from Allah. Now, this also, this unfortunately, this passage also includes the Christians. Now, woe oddly, to... it doesn't apply to uh, 
Muhammad since he actually got it from Gabriel, he claims, and not from Allah, and then claims that it's from Allah. Correct. Correct. So they claim that we edited the Bible and we wrote Islam. Don't forget the the apocryphal heretical gospel of Barnabas is an Islamic forgery because it was written supposedly that that the um, I think Apostle Barnabas who was, who was a companion of Jesus if I recall apparently he the, this book is written by him and it talks about how Jesus affirms all of the claims of the Isa in the Quran which is the Islamic Jesus which is not the Christian Jesus they're two different people so yeah now, now even though it says uh, you know born of Mary you know, why don't you exp explain for a minute why there are different Jesuses? I know we've covered that in the series, but, you know, people are probably lacking understanding there. Um, because, okay, the short version is that the Jesus in the Quran, the Isa, is essentially taken from the infancy gospel of Thomas. So the heretical infancy gospel of Thomas, which was even then considered a false gospel, um, talks about Jesus talking in the cradle, making birds of clay, and doing various miracles as a child. All of these things were taken then as false. And Islam uses this gospel, of this false gospel, to, to say this is Jesus. It also says that his mother, I don't have the exact notes in front of me, but it says that Jesus' mother Mary was Miriam, who was the daughter, I believe, of Aaron, who was the brother of Moses. Now, we know that Moses came, what, 600 years before Jesus? Something like so, that, at least by the official chronology, correct? So, so Islam claims, so don't forget, Islam claims that the, the Trinity is God, Jesus, and the Mother Mary, not, you know, the Holy Ghost, the Holy, you know, Jesus and God. It doesn't, it, it makes a completely different claim about the Trinity, and it says that we altered the Bible to remove all those references, and it has it right. Now, there are, there are two places where the Quran says that Miriam is the mother of Jesus, and she's, the, the as I said, um, the daughter of Aaron, who's the brother of Moses, if I have this correct. And I, I have checked it before. I just can't remember offhand precisely. But, um, but yeah, so, so people are saying, hold on, that's something like a thousand years before or something like that. It's a really long, it's hundreds of years, at least 600 years, if not more. And people are saying, how can she be this daughter, you know, she would be a contemporary of Moses and Moses died centuries prior to that. And the, the Quran has this wrong and it says, well, um, well, um, well, um, you know, um, people used to name people after famous people and that's how it came about, you know, the mistake, you know, the, the Bible has it wrong. So, so that is the claim. So they say that um, Jesus is simply a prophet. He's not divine to worship him is blasphemy to um, give him any ascribe to him. Any kind of divine status is blasphemy. That he's not this. Even he says, "I am not the Son of God." So that that is the difference. And See, in fact, pe people know, in the chat are already going on about you know the Vatican created it, the Jews created. It. I mean, you know, just one text right next to the other, they're contradicting each other as if we didn't yeah. cover this at the beginning of this show and in the other uh, you know shows. But yeah, it's, I know. it's so ridiculous. You know, they can't even keep up with the uh the yeah. points that we're discussing but um you know people i'm gonna just say here really quickly people need to go back and watch the whole series because we've already covered all of this and it gets pretty tiring listening to people regurgitate the same things and you know and when you get into the history with them being massacred so many times why would the jews create it why would the catholics create it in fact oh. when the muslims invaded europe and even attacked the Vatican, you know, but twice. Uh, twice, but the Muslims invaded Europe 500 times. So these theories are just yeah, uh, quack, uh, stupid, you know, literally conspiracy theories and not thought out at all and not based on any logic or reason or fact whatsoever. So let's try to keep it on topic. Thanks, folks. Yeah. Interesting. Someone <laughs> says I'm an Uncle Tom. And um, yeah, odd. interesting. So and um, they were talking about Christian terrorism. Well, there is no doctrine of jihad in Christianity. There is one in Islam, which is about violence, political violence against the Kafir, which is us. Now, also, to um, in, in Islam, 
Jesus, obviously, so Jesus did not die on the cross, was not resurrected, and therefore the underpinnings of Christian faith um, would then be proven false in Islam. So in other words, they, it's a rejection and a complete abrogation and inversion of the idea of um, Christ. So, so that's the difference of Jesus in Islam versus Jesus in Christianity. Well, and we did a whole, what was it, two episodes back, we did a whole comparison between Jesus and Muhammad as well. And Muhammad is clearly a psychopath. And, you know, Jesus is the example of truth and living in logos. You know, Jesus, treat your wife like yourself, you know, love your neighbors, Muhammad, you know, beat your wife, uh, make uh, enemy women your slaves and wives, um, kill the kafir, it's okay to molest babies, etc. So it's literally the inverse, literally the inverse. Correct. So, so let's go on. Um, Okay, so then I will go through. So I'll take it up from here in the section yellow. So Tafsir al-Jalalain, one of the most famous Tafsir, which is a commentary on the Quran, cursed, cursed were the disbelievers of the children of Israel by the tongue of David when he invoked God against them, and they were transformed into apes. In other passages, they were transformed into pigs. I think there's even lizards and snakes somewhere in there as well. These were the people of Elat, and by Jesus, son of Mary, when he invoked God against the Jews, they were transformed into pigs. So you, so they say that Jesus invoked God against the Jews, and he transformed the Jews into pigs. Um, I'm not sure where that is in the Bible, but obviously, um, yeah, Islam knows best. Allah cursed the disbelievers amongst the children of Israel. That's Quran 578, Ibn Kathir commentary. Allah states that he has cursed the disbelievers amongst the children of Israel long ago and revealed this fact to Isa, son of Maryam. I don't know who Isa is, but that's the Islamic Jesus and this Maryam who was, as I mentioned earlier, they disobeyed Allah. They transgressed, transgressed against his creature. They were cursed in the New Testament, in the Psalms and the Quran. Okay. So it says here that... Um, then Maududi, who was a very famous 20th century Islamic commentator and thinker, if the Jews had been sincere believers in God, profited in revelation, they would have taken the side of the Muslims who were believers in these teachings. The thing is that Islam was making incredible claims about Judaism that the Jews said were not true. Now, a lot of Islam is taken from Christian doctrine, certainly, but the bulk of it is taken from there are many others in there as well there's a few other religions in there too but they have copied a lot of the old written the old written torah that's the the laws of moses they've copied a number of that they've t- taken a lot of the jewish traditions but they twisted them and a lot of the stories from the bible they twisted they twisted noah they twisted moses they twisted so many of these stories i mentioned a couple last week and when the jews found out about this they rejected muhammad they laughed they said no and for that reason he killed them he started to hate them. So, okay, they sided with the mushriks against the believers, right? They professed to believe in profited, but they took the side of those who did not believe in it, right? So they still shamefacedly declared that they were believers in God, prophets, and the books. So in Tafsir Jalalain, a severe chastisement to those who write the scripture with their hands. These are the Jews. Now, imagine in Christianity, the Bible had to say the Muslims are the daughters and sons of apes and pigs because this is literally what it says in the quran about the jews and in fact it says it says that christians and jews are the worst of beasts now imagine bible had to explicitly say muslims are the worst of beasts i mean that would be pretty heinous i think and but yet this is said over and over right so it talks about that um, the jews have written fabrications so they say so do christians and woe to them for the earnings by way of bribery Tafsir, we're about halfway. Tafsir, Ibn Kathir told the people of the book altered the book of Allah. That's Jews and Christians. They wrote another book with their own hands. Okay. Woe to them. They were basically going to go to hell for that. Abu Huraira, Sahih Muslim, which is the second most authentic. And because it's Sahih, it is authentic. And most, many Muslims will lie about this. Book 42, number 7136. Abu Huraira reported the rat is the result of a metamorphosis of a group of Bani Israel. So Jews, 
narrated Abu Huraira, the prophet said a group of Israelites were lost. Nobody knows what they did, but they were cursed and changed into rats. If you put the milk of a she camel in front of a rat, it will not drink it. But if the milk of a sheep is put in front of it, it will drink it. So, so the people who were involved in disbelief, the Quran, okay, Tafsir Maduri 5101. The Jews were involved in disbelief because they asked useless and unnecessary questions. These were the Jews. Now, five. We just lost our feed. Hold on a second. What the heck happened here? Good grief. Let's see if we're back. Yeah, we're back. All right. Sorry okay, about so, that. Yeah, we so just correct. we just had a, uh, a feed drop here, so apparently it's all right though. Like there's a guy called Joseph Goebbels in the in the comment section. Yeah, okay. well, you know, and it's like uh, over and over they repeat the same things that we've already debunked in the series. It's incredible that people won't yeah. keep up. And thank you, all of you, for your support during the show. And tomorrow is my birthday, so I really appreciate any oh, wow. donations uh, tonight. I'll be spending most of the day moving tomorrow, so uh, I'll, I appreciate any love. And I appreciate uh, Infinity uh, Split says, uh, Big thanks, Jan. Your info has helped me so much. I hope you keep doing the show and putting out your research. Thank you also, Lloyd, for your time. So thank you uh, for the research. You know what, Lloyd, why don't you uh, uh, post up your email address or what is it again, you know, so I can post it in the chat. I uh, L. De Jong underscore PL at Outlook.com. L. De Jong underscore PL at Outlook.com. I appreciate it. I mean, I put a lot of hours into this. It takes me to do one episode, I mean, it takes me about five to eight hours, five to roughly six, seven hours of research to put the notes together. L. De Jong at uh, underscore, underscore PL. PL at Outlook.com. Oh, at Outlook. Sorry. Yeah. I, you should post something, then I can just give you a moderator. Or, or Actually, I think you have mod rights, so you should be able to actually post. Uh, okay, hold on. Uh, yeah, and people can send uh, PayPal donations directly to him. Yeah, so... I would appreciate it. I mean, that's, thank you. Uh, I'll post that, that, you know, that's not an email address that I use. It's just a PayPal address and I would appreciate it. It'd be very kind. Thank you. Um, yeah. Bazakatron, you got the email address wrong, unfortunately. Um, but thank you for uh, mentioning it. Um, oh, okay, he deleted so, it. So there it goes. Anyway, yeah. Quran 5101 says that, Basically, Muslims must not ask questions or they will start to question Islam. And the first people who questioned and asked unnecessary questions were the Jews. And they were involved in hair splitting. It led them to unnecessary questions about the faith. And Muslims must not ask questions about their faith. They must just accept because otherwise they will start to disbelieve and be led astray like the Jews and by the Jews. Now, Abu Huraira reported, this is in Sahih Muslim Book 41, Hadith 6985. It says, the last hour, in other words, the end times, this is the Islamic end times prophecy. The last hour would not come unless the Muslims fight against the Jews and the Muslims would kill them until the Jews would hide themselves behind a stone or a tree and a stone or a tree would say, Muslim or the servant of Allah, there's a Jew behind me, come and kill him. But the tree Garkad would not say so for it is the tree of the Jews. So this is Muhammad telling his people they have to kill the Jews to bring the end times. And lots of, if you look at some of the things by Hamas, the Palestinian Authority, they talk about it's great that the Jews are gathered in Israel because then we can kill them all at once in one place and not have to go around the world to find them. So now the apostle said, kill any Jew that falls into your power. That's a direct command from Muhammad. Kill any Jew that falls into your power. Then this man, Moisa, we mentioned this before a few times, he leapt on a merchant with whom they had social and business relations and killed him. Now, this story does go on. And they, it says, his brother says, why would you do that? This is a, one of, you know, someone you've known for many years, you've done business with. And he says, because Muhammad told me to do it. And if Muhammad had told me to kill you, my brother, I would have done so too. In that point, the man's brother says, a religion that can make you do that is powerful. And he became a Muslim. So it says very clearly in Sahih Muslim 4363, and of course, Islam is peace. I forgot to say that. The Jews should know that the earth belongs to Allah and his apostle, and I will expel you from this land, Arabia. Don't forget, half of Arabia was Christian and Jewish. 
Well, cr- you know what? And was- while you're on that one, do you want to uh, mention the one that you found in uh, Judaism that's and and just compare the two for a minute so people can see the contrast even between true Which Judaism one? and the one about uh, uh, if it, well the one up above kill any Jew that falls into your power. Or, you know, and we were talking uh, yesterday about the one if they capture, capture a Jewish woman in Islam, they can rape them and make them a wife. And in uh, what did Judaism oh. say? Oh, yes, of course. You know, we covered Islamic slavery where if you capture a woman, you can rape her because your slaves, your captives are someone you can do anything with. Um, uh, sorry. Uh, I, where I done it. Can I look it up a little bit later? Once I have a moment, um, you know, because I've got to find what was that passage? Um, uh, okay, hold on, husband, it will be. Let me try and find that for you. Sorry, I didn't mean to go off topic there, but I just thought it would be a good comparison to give people a little bit of a layup here, you know. Yeah, I know, but. Um, If I recall, um, oh man, I can't remember the. I'll need a minute to, to look it up. So so let me ponder. I can't remember exactly where that was. I know, but that it is something that we will cover, which is the difference in the treatment of captives between Jewish law and Islamic law. Islamic law allows you to rape women, kill the men. And we discussed that at length. It was pretty disgusting as I was going through that. I mean, whereas in Jewish law, that is not allowed. It's absolutely just not allowed. Um, sorry, where was I? I will get back to that if I can just give me a minute and I will look it up in a minute. Okay, so let me finish this. So now to expand. So I will expel the Jews and the Christians. Umahud, the messenger of Alasa, I will expel the Jews and the Christians from Arabia, from Arabia, and I will leave none but Muslims. That's in Sahih Muslim 4366. Now, um, I mentioned the massacre of the Jews last week by Muhammad and his forces. Boys as young as 12 or 14 were killed, provided they had pubic hair. So Abu Dawood 4390 says that the Muslims ordered the boys to drop their pants, and if they had any pubic hair, they had their throats cut, right? Now, they didn't try to determine if these boys were combatants because there were no combatants. There'd been no combat. The Muslims had surrounded the Jews for 25 days, starved them out, and then just killed them, right, and claimed all their possessions. That is where these two passages I've just read to you stem from. Now, to expand upon that, Bukhari 53, 392. While we were in the mosque, the prophet came out and said, let us go to the Jews. We went out till we reached Beitul Midras. He said to them, if you embrace Islam, you will be safe. Don't forget, there's no compulsion in Islam. If you embrace Islam, you will be safe. You should know that the <laughs> earth... But no belongs, compulsion. None. You should know that the earth belongs to Allah and his apostle, and I want to expel you from this land. As you can see, the Muslims... Sorry, no, no. Sorry, let me just get that right. The Jews started at first, as you can see, as I'm reading here. You can tell, right? So if anyone amongst you owns some property, he is permitted to sell it. Otherwise, you should know that the earth belongs to Allah and his apostle. So Muhammad then afterwards attacks first. He announces his intention to take everything from the Jews in Arabia. And those that and they said, no, look, this is our land. We've been living here for years. This is three years after Muhammad entered Medina. And when they said, look, this is our land, he killed them. So the prophet suddenly attacked Bani Mustalik without warning while they were heedless and their cattle were being watered at the places of water. The fighting men were killed. Well, I mean, fighting men, well, if you attack them without warning while they were heedless and their cattle were being watered, well, what fighting men? This is simply the men were killed and their women and children were taken as captives. Sahih Bukhari 46717. Bukhari tells us the Muslims attacked first. So don't forget, if we look at Muhammad's biography, it says, Allah said a prophet must slaughter before collecting captives. A slaughtered enemy is driven from the land. Muhammad, you craved the desires of this world, its goods, and the ransom captives would bring. But Allah desires killing them to manifest the religion. Ibn Ishaq, Ibn Isham 484. I had that passage up before. 
during one of the episodes. And of course, we've got here, Ibn Umar reported witnessing the stoning of a Jewish couple for adultery. Allah's apostles ordered that the two be stoned to death and they were stoned. Sahih Bukhari 8, 809. Now, we know that in Jewish law, stoning is part of Jewish law. And we also know that stoning to death is part of Islamic law. Guess which part of the world they still stone people to death. And I'll give you a clue. It's not Israel. <clears throat> Are you saying that Israel isn't stoning people to death today? And and Islamic Correct. countries well, are? I'm I'm shocked. I did not know that. Islamic countries are still stoning women to death. Think of this. But that question. hasn't happened for like, you know, the last time, you know, like a gay person was killed was like, you know, weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, well, they have gay parades, but have a gay parade in Saudi Arabia and tell me how far you get. When was the last uh, time a woman was stoned to death? It must have been, you know, six months or maybe, you know, three months. I don't know. We should look. You know what? Saudi Arabia still beheads at least 100 people a year. The figures that I've seen in the past were about 200 a year. They still crucify people. They still cut off hands and feet from opposite sides, as said in the Quran and the Sharia. This still happens in Saudi Arabia and still happens in other Islamic countries. Gays are still hanged from cranes in Iran. However, gays are protected in Israel. They're not killed. Now, the same laws are in, however, in Christianity, we've changed. Judaism has changed. Islam still kills people in this brutal fashion. Okay, well, so, I would say it hasn't happened for at least maybe days or weeks. Yeah. Now, notice how many people has, and I will cover this in next week when we get to the next section. We know it's 100, maybe 200 beheadings a year in Saudi Arabia. How many people have been given the death penalty in Israel in the last 60 years? I don't Anyone know. Like I, I'm just trying to look up the most recent uh, two st stoning to last, death. Since 1947, a grand total of two people have been given the death penalty in Israel. Two people. And one of those was Adolf Eichmann, the Nazi. And the other had his sentence afterwards. Unfortunately, after his death, he was given a reprieve and it was commuted. Um so only two in 60 years, which doesn't really lend credence to the idea that their laws are barbaric. At least, you know, I'm, I'm not seeing it. Okay, so now some news items. So now we're getting towards the end of this section. So Hamas, Palestinian Authority, arbitrary arrests, torture, systematic. The systematic practice of torture by Palestinian authorities may amount to a crime against humanity, prosecutable at the criminal court, International Criminal Court. That's a Human Rights Watch report, 23 October 2018. Gaza, Palestinians murdered, okay, tortured and summarily killed by Hamas. That's in the 2014 conflict. That's in the amnesty.org document. I can click these links and go to these articles. They do exist. I mean, I can just click on this one. This is the Human Rights Watch report. Um, so actually, let me just get that link. It opened in a different browser. If I go here, I will paste this. Palestine authorities crush dissent, arbitrary arrest, torture systematic, and that's on Human Rights Watch. You can see that on the screen. Okay, yeah, so you know, some of these people in the chat really can't stand any facts whatsoever. George Washington, Philip Hall, there are a couple others. They really, really hate facts and information. They think they already know everything without even studying it. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, you know, such brilliant minds. Yeah. So now this is not, everyone has a soft spot for the Palestinians, fine and well, but um, this is something that, that we'll probably discuss again in the future, but Imam Okasha in Gaza said that the jihad in Palestine is the most obvious jihad on the face of the earth. Okay, that's the link there. You can look it up on the screen, type it up later. We'll do a search on the article. Okay, it is our, so Gaza scholar, the Hamad, Dr. Muhammad Suleiman al farah it's our religious duty, religious duty to fight the Jews and kill them wherever you may find them. It is a religious duty to fight the Jews in Palestine. The Quranic verse that says, kill the polytheists, wherever you find them, applies to the Jews. Mufti of Egypt, Jews plant the Garka tree to hide from the Muslims. I said that I gave you that passage earlier. So he says Jews are planting these trees, the box thorn trees, to hide from the Muslims on judgment day. The Palestinian cause is Islamic, but must be marketed as humanitarian to garner everybody's support. We posted that video last week, right? Uh, we posted that video last week, and of course, yeah, we did. If you look at the video, it says it is zero percent humanitarian, one hundred percent Islamic. The article is coming up on the right hand side. Yeah. You'll see that. Why don't we? we yeah, because, it, you know, and people should really watch that. If you haven't already from last week's show, you should really check that out. 
So in this discussion taped inside a mosque, I think secretly taped inside a mosque, it says this is not a humanitarian cause. It's 100% Islamic. It's following the Quran, an example of Muhammad. You know, but um, Palestinian who worked with Israel to prevent terror attacks describes torture by the Palestinian Authority. Report, Qatar's financial support for Hamas. Okay, so in this case, I will post, I'll show this here. Qatar is supplying millions of dollars oh, for some reason. Here we go. Qatar's financial supports of Hamas. Notice they're training children here to kill. So while you are teaching your kids to be soft and gentle and have strong feelings, they're teaching their kids to teach your kids with guns. So according to human rights organizations, the Palestinians held in PA prisons are often subjected to forms of torture, right? So the PA continues to arrest and intimidate Palestinian terrorists, uh, journalists, my bad, sorry, in the West Bank, journalists who don't toe the party line and who report on atrocities by Hamas and the Palestinian Authority are even killed. This Palestinian was tortured, but no one cares because it wasn't by Israel. Palestinian recounts torture by the PA for helping Israel to stop terror attacks. Palestinians silencing and intimidating critics, human rights organizations in the Gaza Strip continue to turn a blind eye to Hamas assault on public freedoms of Gazans. They're either afraid of Hamas or they don't care about human rights violations unless they can blame Israel. Now, don't forget, Mahmoud Abbas has been president of, he was elected for a four-year term and he's now in year 15. He didn't have an election again after his four years ended and he did not step down. He did kill his opposition and he's now still the head of Palestine, at least, you know, of Gaza. So Mahmoud Abbas is now a dictator and he is running the show there. Um, after okay so question now the palestinians claim that they are the descended the palestinians philistines right so the palestinians today's palestinians claim that the ancient philistines are their ancestors and they do take their name from the tribe of goliath but do they share dna the philistines were a seafaring people who came from crete the largest of the greek islands the philistines got their name from the hebrew word Plishtim, which means invaders. Palestine means invaded land. Why would we call it that? When the Philistines invaded Israel in the 12th century before Christ, they stayed close to the Mediterranean coast. They never settled in Jerusalem or any cities claimed today by Palestinians. By the 7th century BC, the Philistines had been assimilated by the Assyrians, then conquered by the Babylonians, and they disappeared from the pages of history. No one alive today can prove any Philistine lineage. So if the Palestinians want to claim so, they would have to acknowledge that their real ancestral, ancestral homeland is not Israel, but the Greek island of Crete. That's a fantastic video if you watch it and see the link here. Okay. Um, I will actually bring up the link here on the right and you can see the title. And who are the Palestinians? That is called, who are the Palestinians? An Arab invention, CBN. That's a fantastic video, really good to watch. Islamic relief and Qatar implicated in Tunisian terror finance investigation. Numerous Islamic charity organizations are implicated in terror financing. Muslim clerics, the Muslims must hate the Jews. Okay, six previously unknown photographs of a visit by the Palestinian Mufti of Jerusalem to Nazi Germany. So the Mufti of Palestine, the Grand Mufti, was a friend of Hitler's. I did mention how the yellow star was an Islamic invention, and that's he was the guy that gave that idea to, not to the Nazis. Okay, so Egypt pumps poison gas into terror tunnel. Nine Muslim terrorists missing. Now this only gets reported when Israel does it. Right, Arab historian admits there is no Palestinian people. When the Ottoman rule ended, there was no Palestinian national identity or political borders. It was all made up later. Arabs themselves say so, but the West isn't listening. Again, looked it up. I mean, by all means, you know. Okay, so, so okay. Western imams, Egyptian Canadian writer Saeed Shoaib, Western imams who praise the Islamic Caliphate are terrorists. Western politicians don't know what is really being taught in Western mosques. And also the PLO, they have a pay for slave policy. If you kill, Jews, you get paid. And if you get killed, for instance, your family gets $3,000 a month. So the Palestinians are paid for murdering Jews. And the last one, which you may find interesting, this one, Mahmoud Abbas. 
This is on the BBC. Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas was a KGB agent. Okay, so the final, this is the end of this section. Now, it is known, and I have some, I, I can bring that up next week again or something, that that there was a massive propaganda campaign conducted against Israel by the Russians as revenge for the defeat of the Arab troops during the 1967 war. Um, so, which would, and these were trained and supplied by Russia and they conducted a massive campaign. So Allah is a Zionist and he gave Israel to the Jews until the day of judgment, okay? So we know that Israel is mentioned 44 times in the Quran, but Palestine is not mentioned at all, never, not once. So Quran 2, 47. O children of Israel, call to mind the special favor which I, Allah, bestowed upon you. I preferred you above the whole world. Quran 2, 122. People say we're Israel. being biased because we're actually quoting primary primary texts yeah. in the Quran and, you know, their own statements. It's so biased. It's like, wow, you know, you're, you're actually breaking down, explaining their own texts and literature and that's yeah. biased, apparently. You know the uh, you know and, and audience, please keep the comments on topic. Uh, you know, many of you are getting out of hand. I'm going to start banning the dumber of you here. Yeah. So the Quran says, five twenty one. O my people, enter the holy land which Allah hath given to you, and turn not back. Okay, seven one thirty seven. And we, Allah, made a people considered weak and of no account, inheritors of lands in both east and west lands, whereon, whereon we sent down our blessings. The fair promise of the Lord was fulfilled for the children of Israel, because they had patience and constancy, and we leveled the ground for the great works and fine buildings which Pharaoh and his people erected with such pride. Now, the inheritors of land, both east and west, is the promised land of the Israelites on both sides of the river Jordan. Okay, that's in the Quran. Quran 7, 138, we took the children of Israel safely across the sea. And then we settled the children, 10, 93, we settled the children of Israel in a beautiful dwelling place and prov provided for them sustenance of the best. We, Allah, gave Moses the book, the Torah. So it says they gave Moses the Torah. And we made it a guide to the children of Israel. Take not other than me as a disposer of your affairs. They claim to be the God of the Jews and of Christians. We, Allah, said to the children of Israel, dwell securely in the land of promise. So if Allah has given them Israel as the land of promise, why, what's the, what's the debate here? O oh, children of Israel, we delivered you from your enemy and we made a co covenant with you on one side, on the side of the Mount Sinai. Okay, so we a full time gave Moses the book of guidance and we gave the book, the Torah, an inheritance to the children of Israel. And we chose them, the people of Israel, above all other nations knowingly. That's in the Quran, that's Allah saying he chose Israel, the people of Israel, above all other nations. We did a four-time grant to the children of Israel, the book, and we favored them above all other nations. That's 45, 16. That's that section done. That those are the notes. And this is, there are this 44 mentions of, uh, these are not all the mentions, but these are a significant number of mentions of Jews in the Quran. You'll notice that they're apes, pigs, rats. They are evil, and they are the favored ones. They are, they've been given... Israel as their land on both sides of the River Jordan. Uh, you know, you, you tell me what, what Allah was, was thinking or not thinking. <clears throat> you know, one, you know, and we need to, we're going to cover this more in the next series that we're doing on the Torah and Talmud. But, you know, people are assuming that because we're exposing Islam, we're saying that everything Israel is good or you know, I mean, uh, these leaps to false conclusions, et cetera, get out the uh, false conclusion, Matt. But, um, you know, it's what we're also showing is that these primary texts from the Islamic books show that there is something very dark and nefarious there that people should be looking at. And, you know, it gets pretty old when every, you know, moronic comment that you see in the in the chats and comment says Jew, 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 Jew. And meanwhile, you know, the Islamists are who are bringing in Sharia law throughout Europe and everything and, and invading Europe and, and whatnot. So, uh, and you talked about Osama bin Laden's 21 year plan and what episode uh, two or three yeah. or so, you know, so uh, this is part of that. And, you know, it's, 
it gets annoying when people uh, can't, you know, understand that, you know, there's likely a bait and switch on a lot of this stuff that you and I have talked about a number of times. And, you know, I've talked about it with some other people, but it gets, you know, here's the thing. And people need to think a little bit more critically when everybody's allowed to say, Jew, 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 and nobody's allowed to discuss Islam without people acting like morons, then, um, you know, you got to start questioning that. What is going on there? And we, we've we talked a little bit earlier about, uh, you and I did, about rabbinic Judaism, which came from the Pharisees. Well, who exposed the Pharisees? None other than Jesus did. So, you know, we're going to get in, into that in the next series and show who is whom in the whole mess. But people, uh, please chill out in the chat and keep it on topic. And those of well, you who can't are going to get banned. Yeah, so I'm nearly done with this. And I'll, then we can take some, some some of the questions and comments in the chat. But the people who know the least about Islam have the most to say. Now, uh, always, you know, I experience that constantly. It doesn't matter if it's about psychedelics or Islam or it doesn't matter the topic. I had this guy today tell me that all my re research is wrong on MKUltra and psychedelics that he's never studied. Yeah, but agreed. Agreed, this happens a lot. And um, people's concept of it, well, yeah, it's people have very little knowledge of Islam and yet have all sorts of wonderful opinions. Dunning, it's the Dunning-Kruger effect, you know, incompetent and unaware. And it's just, you know, it's phenomenal to see how many people just post up uh, idiotic stuff. Yeah, I know. So finally, Hamas. The Islamic Resistance Movement, that is the formal name of Hamas. They're, they're, they're also a wing of the Muslim Brotherhood. Right? The Islamic Resistance Movement is a distinguished Palestinian movement whose allegiance is to Allah and his way of life is Islam. It wants to raise the banner of Allah over every inch of Palestine. That's Article 6. It is not a political movement. It is a religious movement based purely on what I've read about the example of Muhammad and the will of Allah. On the destruction of Israel. They don't just want their land back. Israel will exist and will continue to exist until Islam will obliterate it just as it obliterated others before it. This is in the preamble. It is the words of Hassan al-Banna, the founder of the Muslim Brotherhood. This is in the charter. This is the Hamas charter. Now, yes, they did put out a new charter a few years ago, which is, um, I think the scientific term for that is bullshit. So, um, you know, um, yeah. The old charter stood for 30 years before they replaced it to make it um, less violent. The land of Palestine is an Islamic waqf, a holy possession, consecrated for future Muslim generations until Judgment Day. No one can renounce it or any part of it or abandon it. That's Article 11. Now, anywhere that a mosque goes down is a waqf. It's colonization. It is consecrated land. But also, any land that was conquered is conquered for all eternity. And if the Muslims lose it, they must take it back. They lost Israel. They must take it back. They lost Spain. They lost lots of places in Europe, as you mentioned before. They have to take that back. They're... So the jihad will never end. Palestine is an Islamic land. Remember, the only claim they have over Israel, effectively, is this dream Muhammad had. We visited a mosque that wasn't built for 60 years later. Palestine is an Islamic land. So this is the case. The liberation of Palestine is an individual duty for every Muslim, wherever he may be. And the call to jihad. Now, you know that jihad is about personal development and growth. In other words, going to gym, having more salads. And um, the, the day the enemies usurp part of the Muslim land, jihad becomes the individual duty of every Muslim. The compulsory banner of jihad must be raised. Article 15. Ranks will close. Fighters joining other fighters. Right. Hail to Jihad. OK, so that's a little bit of so chapter 22, article 22 of the Hamas Charter. Um, the enemies have been scheming for a long time. They have consolidated their schemes in order to achieve what they have achieved. They took advantage of key elements. They accu accumulated huge and influential material wealth, which they put to the service of implementing their dream. This wealth permitted them to take control of the world media, such as news agencies, the press, publication houses, broadcasting, and the like. They used this wealth to stir revolutions in various parts of the globe in order to fulfill their interests and pick the fruits. They stood behind the French and the communist revolutions and behind most of the revolutions we hear about here and there. They used the money to establish clandestine organizations which are spreading around the world, 
in order to destroy societies and carry out Zionist interests. Such organizations are the Freemasons, Rotary Clubs, Lions Clubs, B'nai B'rith and the like. Probably, I don't know, you pick one, your bowling, your bowling league. All of them are destructive spying organizations. Use the money to take over control of the imperialist state and made them colonize many countries in order to exploit the wealth of those countries and spread corruption therein. As regards local and world wars, it has come to pass. No one objects. They stood behind World War I so as to wipe out the Islamic Caliphate. Yes, that's why World War I was fought. They collected material gains and took control of many sources of wealth. They obtained the Balfour Declarations and they established the League of Nations to rule the world by the means of that organization. They stood behind World War II, where they collected immense benefits from trading with war materials and prepared for the establishment of their state. They inspired the establishment of the United Nations and the Security Council to replace the League of Nations to rule the world by their intermediary. There was no war that broke out anywhere without their fingerprints on it. So, and they mentioned here, verse 64, <laughs> as often as they light a fire for war, Allah extinguishes it. Their efforts are for the corruption in the land and Allah loves not corruptors. Yeah. The forces of imperialism in both the capitalist West and the communist East support the enemy with all their might in material and human terms, taking turns between themselves. When Islam appears, all the forces of unbelief unite to confront it because the community of unbelief is one. So it says here, the Quran, they quote the Quran again, verse 118 of Al Imran. O you who believe, take not for helpers. Well, the different translations use different words that have, have intimates other than Muslims who would spare no pain to ruin you. In other words, Muslim, Jews and Christians are out to destroy the Muslims. Hatred is revealed by the utterance of their mouths, but that which their breasts hide is greater. That's the hatred of the Muslims by Jews and Christians. We have made plain for you the revelations, if you will understand. So, as you can see, Article 22 of the Hamas Charter is what you would call a litany of conspiracy theories. Well, I would call a litany of conspiracy. So all of these claims about the, I mean, the charter was written, what, in the 70s, 60s? So all of these claims that people are making are taken straight out of chapter 22 of the Hamas that the Jews stood down World War I. And so, you know, um, yeah, th th this is what Hamas is. And Hamas is a terrorist organization. And they must yeah. Somebody is saying they don't think that putting all of their own stuff from their own texts and books and words and everything is fair, you know, to put it on them. I shouldn't quote them. You mean I should like? Yeah, apparently, should... you know, you know, see, you know, most people are of the victim mentality these days. So, you know, no group is responsible for their own behavior. It's no matter what they do is somebody else's fault. So you can't blame their own texts and books and material on themselves there has to be you know a jew or a this or a that behind it yeah. they can't be evil and bad on their own there's you know there's always a victim we always have to play the victim game it's the liberal way you know yes. to, to play victim you know i mean you know without victimization you know where would liberals be i mean they would have to think on their own and look at facts yeah i mean so the jews obviously created islam so that and and the Catholics and the Jes Islam. and the Jesuits and the, you know, and, and, Napoleon and the Illuminati and a whole bunch of other people, because they wanted to commit suicide by Islam. That's why they that's why they created Islam. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, it makes so much sense that the Jews would create Islam to kill the Jews. That makes that makes a lot of sense. I mean, wow. I mean, a staggering intellect. Yeah. Excuse my sarcasm. Yeah. Okay. So, so that this, this wraps this section up for me. I mean, this, <laughs> I, I could spend the licks. I could look, I mean, I, we could sit here for hours, right. But obviously I, I got to pick what I'm going to talk about. And this is, um, so now I was thinking to go through some of the comments and, um, maybe just, you know, address some of the things that were said in the comments. Cause I see that we don't always, we haven't always done that. We've only done it once before. That's yeah, right. apparently uh, it's the 900th episode of Lloyd and the Muslim Bash Crew. Okay, we're not we're not presenting no, facts not, and primary no. citations. We're just bashing no. them. Well, what people wow. don't understand is I make a distinction, which they do not. I make a distinction between Islam, which is a set of ideas. Islam is an ideology. I talk about Islam. I read from Islam's books. Muslims are people. I separate Muslims as people from Islam and ideology, but people who bash Jews and hate Jews talk about the Jews, the Jews. 
they're, they're they, they, they can't people. talk about individual people who did, you know, terrible acts. They use a broad brush against cool. all Jews and, you know, and yeah, so no. this is, you know, this is the mentality. All Muslims are innocent and they're the victims. All Jews are yeah. bad. And, uh, yeah. you know, and we can't focus on any primary citations from either group. It's, it's bafflingly uh, stifled intellect there. Yeah. Now, I, I make the distinction between people and ideas, and I criticize the ideas. Why should Islam be free from criticism? Why should it be exempt? If people talk about, see who you cannot criticize to see who rules over you, well, you but damn sure cannot talk about Islam either. So who's ruling over us if we can't talk about Islam? And we know what happened to Charlie Hebdo, right? Now, people talk about, why can't they talk about Judaism, rabbinic Judaism, the Torah, versus Jews as people? Why, why is it so hard to make a distinction? Why do you have to use such a broad brush and paint all Jews? That's like saying all white people are racist, all Jews are bad. You know, the, the, that is propaganda. That is not research. That is not forensic thinking. That is not, that is not, that is merely propaganda with an agenda. That's all that is when you speak that way. Yeah, so, Handsome Truth just posted in the comments that they, meaning the Jews, are the spawn of Satan. Revelation 3 9, Jews are of the devil. That's not actually what it says. That's a very poor misquote. And, and Handsome Truth is uh, very well known. So I'm going to address that right here and right now uh, so that everybody can see that he just totally took that quote out of context. And so Revelation 3 9, it's actually already highlighted right here. Uh, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. So that right here implies that there are real Jews and not all Jews are of Satan's spawn. And that's actually speaking specifically about the Pharisees and the rabbinic Judaism and how that got spun. And so obviously this implies that there are real Jews. And I appreciate... Uh, you know, the donation, Jonathan, but uh, let's not uh, misquote things for, you know, for the GDL agenda, which yeah. it clearly is. And, well, we uh, you know, so, and then we, uh, sorry, just real quickly, and we can go to Revelation 2 9 is basically the same thing. Those which say the blasphemy of them, which say they are Jews and are not, and are of the synagogue of Satan. So, again, these, it, this implies that there are real Jews, and this is about the Pharisees which Jesus exposed, and the Pharisees became rabbinic Judaism. So let's keep it on topic. But it also says that those who are of the synagogue of Satan are not Jews. It says Correct. Right yes, yes, that's, that's exactly right. Those who are of the synagogue of Satan are not Jews. It's very clear that the people who do this stuff are violating Judaism. It's like when you see, you know, people who do things outside of Christianity— and then all the Christians get blamed for it. It's like if they're doing stuff that's not part of uh, Judaism, you know, it, and it's and there's as the specific laws are laid out, uh, then uh, you know. And he's accusing me of of being run by Alex Jones now because I dare go on Alex Jones to expose MK Ultra. That's not very good spin. Again, thanks for the um, you know the the five dollar donation, but. Uh, and, you know, in the next series, Handsome Truth, maybe uh, you can participate in the uh, chat in, in the next series as we cover the Torah and the Talmud, and you can get uh, edified on what the Talmud quotes actually okay. say, because we've been investigating those. Okay, I found, the, I found that passage you wanted me to share, Jan. Yeah. Uh, I'll go back to it. Okay, so we will be discussing... Judaism as an ideology, we will be doing that. Now, I've had many, many years, as you know, you've seen my database, if you've looked at my screen, I have a massive database on Islam with primary citations from Islamic books. I have a 3.5 gigabyte library of Islamic source texts taken from the best Islamic websites. These are all of the Islamic books. I have 98% of, of all of the major Islamic books, right? Those that are in English, I have, right? And so I've had years to study these, go through these, take notes. Now, Judaism is huge. And people know even less about Judaism than they do about Islam. And we will be talking about that in the coming weeks. And um, um, though we did speak at length about the Islamic treatment of captured men and women. They killed the men. 
They sold the women and children to slavery and they allowed to rape the women. It is allowed. We discovered, we discussed that at length. It was horrific. And Muhammad was doing it. His companions were doing it. His friends were all raping women. It was horrific. Now, I did mention that one of the things was not to destroy trees. Now, Islam says that Muslims will tell you, well, Islam has very, very good laws of war. And it says don't even destroy a tree. Now, that is taken straight out of Deuteronomy 2019, which is part of the Jewish law of the Torah, and not to destroy food trees even during the siege. The Islamic version is a slight corruption of that. Keep the laws of captive women. Keep the laws of the captive, captive women. That's Deuteronomy 21.11. Do not sell her into slavery. Deuteronomy 21.14. Islam allows you to sell captured women into slavery and rape them. You may make them sex slaves. Do not retain her for servitude after having sex with her. If you're going to have sex with the woman, there's a rule for that. And I'll explain that. And this guy, now, here's the thing. You can bash the Jews all you like, but this is the Christian Bible too. This is, then you may as well say Christianity is just as evil. Well, what they, and what they do though, is they, you know, and Christianity stems primarily from the New Testament and some don't even follow the Old Testament at all. But you know, the thing is, is these quotes are taken entirely out of context, and then those who violate them or don't follow them at all are then accused of being the Jews. You know, so it's it's a really interesting, you know, it's like an atheist Jew. That's a that's an oxymoron. And yeah. I years ago, I interviewed um, uh, Professor Shlomo Sand from the University of Tel Aviv, Israel, and in his book, uh, The Invention of the Jewish People. And he argues that the Jews as a people were were invented in the uh, fourteen or no in the sorry in the seventeen hundreds, you know. So it adds a whole interesting layer there. It's not, you yeah, know, technically a, a race. It's a religion that's been spun yeah. into a race by the, the Pharisees and those whom the Bible exposes. Right. Well, let me read this. So we read previously. And, in and just previous so you know, uh, somebody has a question for you there on screen. Sure. What is that question at the bottom? Of a quick seat? question for Lloyd, although a little off topic. Uh, Lloyd, did you create the Piper tripwire system of knife fighting? That is off topic. That is completely off topic. <laughs> um, man, I'd love to send me an email. You know, um, send me an email, whatever. Um, um, yeah, my email's not hard to find. <laughs> I know. <laughs> You know, this is not about his martial arts. We're, let's keep it yeah. on topic. You know, and you know and I appreciate the donation you're there. Working under a pseudonym. It's like, shit, man. Sorry. This is my real name. <laughs> you know, unless your name is James Smith, Jan, and I don't know about it. But okay, sorry, just to get on. When thou goest, Deuteronomy 21 11, this is the Jewish law with regards to cap women taken captive, as opposed to the Islamic rule of having sex with women you capture. Right, using them as sex slaves. When thou goest forth to battle against thine enemies, and the Lord delivereth them into thy hands, and you carry them away captive, and seest among the captives a woman of goodly form, and thou hast a desire for her, and you would take her to be your wife, then you shall bring her home to your house. She shall shave her head and pare her nails. She shall put the raiment of her captivity from off her, and shall remain in thy house, and bewail her father and her mother for a full month. And after they may, they may, thou may goest in unto her and be her husband, and she shall be thy wife. And it shall be, if you have no delight in her, then let her go whither she will. But thou shalt not sell her at all for money. Thou shalt not deal with her as a slave, because thou hast humbled her. So that is a complete contrast. And this is like, this is 3,000 years old. Islam comes like, comes along two, 3,000 years later than the Old Testament, and is even more brutal and primitive. Um, so infinity split the four, five, six. I mean, the short version is yes and no. Um, it's a hybrid of something that, but yeah, send me an email. We'll discuss it later. Um, off, it's very off topic. Okay, and the thank you for the donation, Tian. I do appreciate it, but it really is off topic. Email me. I will, I will definitely answer you. But and thank you for supporting Jan. Okay, so. Um, yeah, so that's that. So to go through the questions and comments, um, so that I can we can tackle some of those. Jan. Any qu any comment, yeah? Because that, that was what you wanted me to cover. Sure. Uh, let's see. Because you asked me to read that passage, and that was the passage. Yeah, yeah, remember. yeah. So you know, let's the see. You know, and, and uh, handsome truth is arguing about Professor Shlomo Sand's book, and you know, the issue is if you wanted to argue 
that they were, you know, that the, and, and this is off topic, this show is about uh, Islam, but if you wanted to argue that the Jews are Judeans, that's one thing, but if they're Ashkenazis from the Ukraine, that's an entirely different thing. So, yeah. you know, uh, again, you know, read the text before you say something is BS. Uh, I mean, I would recommend buying Shlomo Sand's book, at least listen to my interview with him. I interviewed him like eight, nine years ago, but check those out. I listened to him. I should do that as well. Um, okay, so to go through some of the questions that are in the comments um, and the fake Zion Christians, okay, whatever. Um, yeah, thank you. Natty Nasty, we will not let them distract us. Um, I think Islam was invented by a crypto Jewish Catholic wife, therefore all ancestors would be Jewish, and told to Muhammad by said wife's cousin in a Plato cave. Um, I think that's, he's joking, right? We hope so. You never know. Uh, Plasma Plasma John says, we're doing Takia tonight. That's very nice. Okay. Um, awesome. Um, he's obviously doing comedy. Um, and it says, Phoenicians is Tarsus or whatever. Okay. Yeah. Jews were courtiers because they knew writing. They were good mathematicians. Well, that is true. Um, they were learned people. Um, I saw some questions earlier. Um, the people of the world, uh, you should time. Okay. Do you see any good questions? I need a copy of the Quran. I, I don't copy? see uh, any good questions, Mac, Mac, unfortunately. Mac Laura, I personally don't have any written copies of the Quran. I use them all online. Quranx is my preferred site. Q-U-R-A-N-X.com. It has 16 different versions of the Quran. They used to have more, but they've taken a couple away. Um, but they use authorized translations. They're the biggest. They claim to be the biggest Quran site in the world. And uh, they, are, they use officially endorsed versions. And... In the debates, I often get told that all of these English translations are false. Then why is Saudi Arabia printing them? Why is Syria printing them? Why is Iran printing them? Why is why are these places printing false Qurans, spreading fake Islam if we can't believe a word they say? And that's, you know, how many of the texts have you taken and put in like Google Translate or translation software and found them to be totally different than uh, the translation? That happens a lot. Even in the Sharia manual that I use, a lot of those texts have been watered down. Yes, that does happen. Like, you know, beat your wife, and they'll say nudge. They'll use the right, word, oh. right. Exactly. You know, but my concern, you know, and this is directed at handsome truth and those who only talk about the Jews is while you're only focused on, you know, uh, pharaonic or, or rabbinic Judaism and the wrongs that they've done, the, the, Islamists get entirely ignored and there's a billion Islamists and you know we have to be careful with doing that so yeah. um yeah. somebody wants Could to mention- elaborate on Timothy 6 1 through 2 what you know what people like to do is they'll quote one passage out of context and then they think that they've debunked the whole thing let me pull that up yeah Aaron Ritter mentioned part six hasn't shown up on any updates okay well Part six, um, yeah, part six is definitely in Yon's channel. That's where we started the introduction of Islam versus the Jews. See, it you know, the- Timothy 6, 1 and 2 talks about servants under thy yoke and the masters worthy of honor. The name of thy God is doctrine, be not blasphemed. You know, people have to realize that, you know, back up until, uh, you know, even 100 years ago, servants were like employees, you know, and you weren't supposed to treat them harshly. They that having... Uh, have believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren, but rather do them service because they are faithful and beloved partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. And then uh, if any man teach otherwise, consent not, consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine, which is according to godliness. He is proud knowing nothing but dotting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil uh, surmisings, etc., perverse disputings of men and corrupt minds, and dispute of the truth, dispute of the truth, get that point, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. So see, you know, see how Philip took, you know, what they do is they'll take, and we see this so often, and with the Quran and with all of these texts, they'll take a very small snippet and then ignore the rest of the text around it that gives it context. And then uh, continuing on here very quickly, but godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we carry nothing out. So as soon as you understand the full context, 
Um, you know, it, you know, Philip, I suggest you sit down and read the New Testament on your own. And, and the biggest issue that people have with the New Testament is they go based on the lies that everybody else has told them about what it says rather than sitting down and reading it uh, for yourself. And right. you know, Handsome Truth wants to know your faith. Um, I mean, I've been I've been on the show not to discuss religious issues. For instance, I don't care that in Islam, if you die, you get a white Toyota Corolla and there's no speed limits on the roads. But in Judaism, you get a red Corolla and petrol is free. Those are not important issues. I've been discussing from primary citations, reading from their own books, and I'm talking about the political aspects. Uh, I know Spanish. what your religion is, and it's not what uh, Handsome Truth is trying to corner you I, as. Uh, sorry, I'm a dyslexic agnostic insomniac. In other words, I lie awake at night wondering if there really is a dog. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Oh, so, good if a hero who was, who was uh, very vocal in the comments prior on various youtube videos that we've done together Jan. he says um, muslims run the federal reserve right lloyd and the quran is garbage um no the quran is hot garbage and um you know it's a dumpster fire of garbage and the muslims do run the united nations for instance the largest voting bloc at the un is the oic the organization of islamic cooperation now the standing joke at the un is that the oic could pass a resolution in the un that the earth is flat and that Israel flattened it. So they are the ones that run the UN right now. All of these um, anti-Muslim blasphemy, I'm uh, sorry, and these blasphemy laws that are being passed against people commenting on Islam, that's all coming out of the UN. All of these Muslim, like, these migration pacts, that's passed by the OIC, the, the Marrakech proposal, um, you know, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, for Infinity Split, check on Facebook. Just do a Google search, you'll find it all there. Um, so, do they teach? The, <laughs> do they teach it in Mossad? Uh, yeah. Well, hey, if you hero, I mean, oh, I do. I, I do need to give someone a small apology. Um, um, yeah, I, I mentioned last week that um, that I was I was called by various people a Jewish, Islamic, Christian, um, Catholic. Mossad jihadi CIA agent, which sure and whatever. monkey to, and, and, and just and monkey. just to make and sure that that you know no matter what ha came about of it that they would end up right. And what's funny is you're none of those. Yeah, but I do know right. your religion, and they still haven't gotten it right. So it's pretty yeah. funny. However, but um, however, but um, there is some. You know who you are. I do apologize. I did say the word Catholic because you called me a something Catholic. And you did apologize, and I did accept that, and I do owe you. And I, I, I should have qualified my statement um, before that because I wasn't looking to smear you. I wasn't looking to offend you, um, because yeah, we, we did sort ourselves out and um, came to you know came to agreement, and which I appreciated. But yeah, so so just to um, I shouldn't have I should have given context to the statement that um, I was uh, everything was in reference to um, you know things I had been called. Uh, but yeah, you know who you are, and um, appreciate um, you know your understanding. I, I should have been more careful in what I said there. Okay, yeah. Um, so, yeah, do you should I quickly just mention these Noahide laws? Just a brief introduction to some of the things we will be discussing in the coming weeks. Sure, why not? That'll be fun because you know there's such a huge conspiracy around that. So we might as well, uh, um, you know, start give people a little uh, preview. We've you know. We've got a little time here. So I'm going to share my screen again. Okay, there you see it on the left-hand side. Yeah, it's coming up uh, here still. Just a second. So there it so goes. I've been hearing a lot of people talk about the Noahide conspiracy. Now, the seven laws of Noah are after the flood. Noah lands on the mountain, and Noah then gets seven laws from God. Five of those laws are one-to-one -one correlation with the Ten Commandments. So if they if, now, I have read long screeds, I mean, really long articles, talking about how the Noahide laws are satanic and how they are a conspiracy to take over the world. Now, if five of them are taken are directly from the Ten Commandments, with the Ten Commandments directly, then, then Christianity is also satanic and an attempt to take over the world. I mean, this makes no sense to me. So 
Now, here are the seven laws of Noah. Now, listen to the Satanism inherent in this. Do not commit idolatry. Do not deny God. Do not blaspheme the Lord your God. Do not murder. That's satanic right there. Do not murder. Do not engage in adulterous relationships. Do not steal. Do not eat the flesh or drink the blood of a living animal and establish a legal system. Those are the Noahide laws. Now, law number one of Noah. Let's go to the Ten Commandments. I am the Lord thy God who brought thee out of the land of Egypt. You shall have no other gods before me. And thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness. Thou shalt not bow down to them or serve them. That is the first of the Noahide laws. Ten Commandments. Number three. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. That is Noahide law number two. Do not murder. Thou shalt not murder. Ten Commandment number six. Thou shalt not commit adultery. That's Noahide law number four. And thou shalt not steal. That is Noahide law number eight. Now, if the Noahide laws are satanic and a conspiracy, then so is the Ten You mean uh, Noahide law number five? You, you gave the wrong number there. Oh, so sorry, yeah. <laughs> but, if, but if the Noahide laws are satanic and a conspiracy, then so are the Ten Commandments. Right, and, and so we hear this all the time, that they are a, Noahide laws are a conspiracy. So, you know, when you see them laid out like that, oh, it's the very early foundation of the Ten Commandments. Exactly. And so... You know, so someone is uh, trying to slander the Jews, but also don't forget, this would rebound on Christians. This would rebound on the Bible. This would re rebound on the Christian faith and on Western culture at the end of the day. I would ask us, I, the question I would ask is at the end of the day, what is the ultimate aim of all of these ideas that seek to undermine all of these ideas of people, these are values that people hold? It undermines the West. It weakens the West. It weakens Western culture, Western law. Right, and that's I think that's the entire goal is to undermine Western culture. And you gotta, you know, you gotta be careful yeah. of being a, a cuck, you know, against some of the stuff because, yeah. you know, right now they just signed a, you know, uh, Feinstein or, uh, yeah, signed a thing taking uh, uh, God out of the, you know, swearing oath of office for here in California. I mean, it's it, oh it's gosh. absurd once you get that. Logos is truth. The truth is God, you know, and the New Testament repeats this, you know, like 219 times or something like that. And then yeah. you you get why they want to take this stuff out. They are literally trying to remove truth out of the uh, <laughs> text, which, you know, you can't remove God out of the text without removing truth out of the text. You know, the two are intrinsically tied together. Yeah. Also, I found like lots of people. There, there's a question for you there, by the way, but go yeah. ahead. Do so you want to, are you done with that? Should you, you want to unshare? I'll do one more. I'll just, just okay. do this section here, but what is the question first? Uh, question for Lloyd and you, how well preserved are the texts? We didn't get canonical Bible until 1500s, 500 years after Jesus. Uh, how much is manip manipulated, twisted? Okay, so here's a question. If everything is unreliable, then of course, what you need to do is, the only reliable thing is Islam and maybe the, the Bible of Satan. You know, go with that because nothing in the Western world has been preserved. Every single thing you know is false. Nothing is certain and you need to now just, I don't know, go with whoever gives you certainty. You know, and to me, the New Testament, you know, is so explicit that it's about following truth. So anything that doesn't lay out truth and following truth, righteousness, correct behavior, that's where, where righteousness comes from, the right, what is correct, what is true, you're right about something. Uh, if it doesn't follow and lay out and explain that truth is God, and, you know, Jesus well, being the example... Okay. Well, just a second, I, I, uh, let me finish this point. And Jesus being Logos incarnate, then I would say it's a uh conflation or you know a a misleading text but when you read it yourself it should be pretty clear once you get that it's about truth and you know yeah. that's where honor and you know all of that comes from as well so if you look at plato like some of plato's or homer like the iliad i think there's only three or five copies of the original script the manuscript of the iliad that's left and we trust that the authorship is correct and that the contents of the document is correct because obviously, as people write things, there are slight changes that happen, you know, slight, slight grammatical changes. These are not major errors. These are not, they, they don't change the substance. If you look at the documentation for the Old and New Testaments, if you go back 
you have something like for the New Testament alone, there's something like over 30,000 original manuscripts dating to, I think, up to from as early as 15 years after the death of Christ. So when you go through, when you do a textual analysis of the documents from that, you can find that the same meaning has been preserved through all of that time. So there is, there are methods. I mean, it would be interesting, actually, if you read through some of the, um, the ways that scientists use science to, to um, check the validity of source text, and they apply it to all sorts of documents. And in this case, you've got over 30,000 documents going back to the very beginning. And you can, you can look at older documents, newer documents, do comparisons, and you'll find that there's a great deal of consistency and accuracy. I think that's the more accurate answer to this. Let me do one quick passage. Like there was people saying that the Jews eat children, they sacrifice kids and like, okay, fine. So look, Christians rob banks because robbing banks is obviously in the Bible. No, if you rob a bank, it doesn't make you a Christian. It makes you a bank robber. (laughs) (laughs) Unless it says in the book, go rob banks. It, you know, in which case then, then that is scripture and doctrine, but it's not. So for instance, Deuteronomy 18, 10 to 11. When you come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not follow the abominable practices of those nations. So he's talking about, um, uh, geez, the, the idolatrous nations, um, Babylonians and Canaanites. They shall not be found among you. Anyone who burns his son or daughters as an offering. Um, it continues the other passages that say specifically to Moloch, right, to Moloch. Anyone who practices divination or tells fortunes or interprets omens or a sorcerer, or a charmer, or a medium, or a necromancer, or one who inquires of the dead. For whoever does these things is an abomination to the Lord. So this is the original Jewish written law that was given to Moses. So if a Jew does this, he's not a Jew. Sorry, I mean, it's like an atheist Christian. If you're an atheist, you're not a Christian. Right, exactly. You know, and it's like, you know, somebody saying Jews do eat children, and then uh, Handsome True says that. Well, if they're doing that, that's against what the old testament says specifically you know so so, you know it's like you know you got to speak you know specifically and you know that's a big issue is you know people hiding you know going back to revelation 3 9 those who claim they are jews and are not but do lie and that means they are not jews for instance why do the know white now look earlier effie hero who gave us a lot of nonsense um, i love you too much to change and he gave me a lot of nonsense by talking nonsense if a hero, yes, I named you. Um, for instance, when I said the Noahide laws, all five of them are just from the Ten Commandments, and you know, and people are talking about how they are satanic and a conspiracy. And he's going, well, actually, no. The problem is not that. The problem is actually something else. See, so now that you've gotten rid of the main objection, it's actually, oh no, no, the objection is not the objection. They, they move the objection. moving the goalpost fallacy. Like, whatever, whatever. Yeah, you know. Whatever. And if I if I answer that one, it's going to be, well, you know, actually, what did, you know, whatever, you know, sure. I mean, look, if you can prove to me that the Ten Commandments are satanic and a, and a conspiracy to take over the world, by all means, because the, that's the that's the Noahide laws. I, I don't see where the hysteria, the old woman hysteria comes from. That's my perspective. We are going to be talking about Judaism. We will be talking about some Jewish history. And yeah, we, we are going to be looking at some very controversial issues. I have my own opinions, but yeah, we're going to be going through the source texts of Judaism as we have, and we're going to be doing a lot of stuff. And I think that a lot of what people believe and say is just blatantly wrong. They're so used to, you know, citing the the quotes that, uh, you know, and you and I directly fact-checked several of those quotes or a number of them from the Talmud. And then as soon as you start actually reading the Talmud and and seeing the full thing in context, at least 60 to maybe 80% of those quotes are taken entirely out of context. Yeah. And that's not to defend Talmudic Judaism, which is, you know, uh, from the Pharisees. I I mean, I don't particularly agree with the Talmud. I don't agree with rabbinic Judaism. But that is said, a lot of what people are saying about the Talmud is false. Right. Exactly. So why, why do you have to lie? If it's so bad, why do you have to lie about it? Right. You know, why not, you know, present it and show, and if you're done, why don't you unshare screen? But if, you know, why not go into the primary text and show this stuff? And then everybody uh, ends up uh, repeating the same lies. And of course, lies are yeah. from Satan. So we have to be careful. For and instance, then, yeah, I'm not even like someone else. People that, you- okay. 
Going are behind baby. abortion, condom, birth control, yada, yada, yada. So is the UN. So was the Huxley family. In fact, um, uh, the Huxley family is the largest promoter of birth control. The, uh, Aldous Huxley came up with the term the pill. Um, you know, and it's like, and he says, the not Muslims, fact check me, bro. So uh, you know, if you want to get like into the. Rats, he says, though, he's talking about the Jews. Now think about it. Why if the Bible had to say, Muslims are the ugliest, dirtiest people on earth. Muslims are rats and Muslims are pigs. The, the, the Quran says that about Christians and Jews. You know, that is blatant hatred of Christians and Jews and Westerners on the whole. You know, that, that is disgusting. I mean, so now, right. and Muslims have taken that on as now we will demonize this group and we will hate them. Handsome no, Truth, I recommend you go into my database and uh, let's. And I'm just going to show this on screen here. Uh, we can type in eugenics and we can see. Oops, I'm spelling it wrong. And we can uh, see who exactly was behind all of that. And we can see like Jack well, Parsons, thing. Tavistock Institute, Julian Huxley, Edward Bernays, Gloria Steinem. If we get into uh, just a second, if we get into Aldous Huxley, we can see that. He coined uh, the term the pill. And uh, let me see all these words here that he coined. Here's the pill right here. He was working with Margaret Sanger, as was uh, Julian Huxley. So, yeah, I mean, I would love to get into the facts behind that. Sure, there are people that promote the communist ideas and whatnot. But, uh, you know, uh, he says, you want me to debunk your ass. So apparently he's going to debunk the primary citations. I've been documenting uh, these people working w for the CIA and counterculture and all that for years. I've done shows on it. Go back a few weeks ago. We did a, a show with Isabella Wilson on the history and origins of uh, birth control and all of that. I do recommend you go and check that out. And we show all of these people involved in it. I'd be happy for you to check all of that. Yeah, no. Um, so, yeah, we'll, I mean, so. Are, are you done uh, with I'm share done. screen? I'm done. Okay, I'm let's done. turn off the share screen then. My bad, yeah. Yeah, that's me. Um, yeah, you know, yeah, anyway, this, we should leave the rest of the discussion for, for the actual section when we get to the Talmud. Right. People are already getting upset and just. You know, uh, you know said Jews, I said people that look like rats. Handsome Truth 26, yes, you were referring to Jews. Effie Hero, put them on timeout for that. This is just getting ridiculous. People, you know, it, it, they can't deal with the facts, yeah. so they have to attack the messenger. We're not upset. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, yeah I anyway, mean, I guess this is... People. Go ahead. There's a lot of people... Now, there's a lot of people that have a vested interest in... Um, in I would have to call it Jew hatred or the demonization of the Jews. And if we start to present evidence taken from this, the primary source text that a lot of these Talmud quotations people are giving are false, that, you know, then that means hundreds of people have been repeating and repeating. Them I, you know, I'll, I'll be the first to admit that I used to repeat those Talmud quotes often. And then when I started going and fact checking it, I was pretty shocked, you know, and how many times have, since I started my show over 10 years ago, have I had to oh, eat crow? Said, if you. Yeah. How many times have I had to eat crow in the 10 and a half years since I started the show when I found out that I was wrong about something, you know? And it's like, I yeah. go where the research goes. I don't hang on to an idea, you know? So it's it's it gets kind of silly, but we'll go into the Talmud and into the Torah and break everything down and show what's what. And then, uh, you know... We're not saying that, you know, people who do wrong are good. You, you focus on those who do wrong and don't blame the whole group. So just like you've discussed with, uh, you know, Islamists and, and Muslims, etc. So we have to be specific. Blame the people actually doing the stuff, not the whole group. You know, besides, I mean, blaming everyone, it would rather what's a group condemnation is a war crime under the UN. What's, what's the, it's a thing. Um, group, group punishment is, um, you know, you, you can't blame everybody because like it's saying again, all white people. Well, half my family's white. I have a nephew who's like two years old. What's he guilty of? Are you going to kill him for being white? Right. Well, 
you know i mean there, there will be consequences for something like that you know i mean that's just it's like i want a reason to hate and i've picked you guys to hate that's a lot of what i'm reading yes the people have committed crimes but then we have to identify those specific people but you cannot smear everyone yeah. Well, okay. and who's undermining Western values? I mean, that's, you know, certainly there are a lot of Jews involved in that. So, and I've seen yeah, that. And MK Ultra. I mean, this guy's a little out of hand, man. But, you know, we have to look at the CIA has been promoting yeah. the whole MK Ultra program. We've shown how that ties into yeah. feminism, yeah. how it ties into birth control, how it ties into all yeah. of this stuff. And some truth has just said, yeah, yeah, he's white. He's claiming I'm a white Jew. If you see there in the comments, White with the three brackets. So basically, I'm a white Jew. It's just said, "Yeah, he's white." You know. See, I mean, they're that's... they're they're use, they're looking for any ad hominem attack to use rather than focusing on the information we provided. It just gets silly. Uh, look, once he gets out of the basement, you know, gets a job, you know, McDonald's might employ you. You can flip burgers, and then you can learn how to say, "Do you want fries with that?" He's Bad actually life. a he's actually a rapper. Or are you talking about Handsome Truth? Yeah, hundred two twenty six, yeah, yeah, and um, and he's had his. That's how many times his channel's been shut down, twenty six. Yeah. Anyway, look. Um, so yeah, um, look. I'm. Anyway, the, so I'm pretty much. Um, that's a wrap for me on this, and I hope this was useful to people. I've given you all the primary citations. I can provide all of the books that I've been using because I have a huge library of Islamic books. You've seen all the citations on screen. You can check them for yourself. I did not take anything out of context. Right. Yeah, please check the citations. Uh, Handsome Truth, everybody else, F.E. Hero, you know, watch the whole series. Look at the citations. Check the citations yourself, yourselves, and then, uh, you know, go from there. But, you know, uh, getting upset because we're challenging certain views and, you know, groups that have been, you know, again, Pharisees and rabbinic Judaism is not all Jews. Again, go back and read Feb uh, Revelation 3.9 that you intentionally misquoted earlier tonight that I called you out on. So, uh, you know, just uh, try to keep it on the facts. Don't take things out of context. Uh, in and... the Talmud, a rabbi can cohabitate with a young girl three years in a day old. Sure, sure, sure. Why don't you give us the, the factual citation, the full thing? And, I mean, those are things that Yan and I have looked at. It's like you're not the first guy to say this. Um, but, yeah, that <laughs> – yeah, sure. He says, uh, uh, me and Activist News versus you two, you down, you will be schooled. So – and then, you know, and so what we'll do is, you know, we'll bring up the primary citations that they've never studied, and then we already know how it goes from there. Yeah, you know, saying the guy flips burgers kind of ad hominem, just saying, sure, yeah, hey, I mean, sure. You should see some of the things people say about me in the comments. And I've been pretty, I've been polite for the most part. You know, I haven't sworn at anyone yet, um, you know, but I've been called a lot of names that, that just shouldn't be said in public. And I've, yeah, I've seen it. It's pretty bad. And uh... you know, <laughs> I would like to Edward see Edward has a me. clue. <laughs> What's that? I'd like to see Lloyd debate handsome truth. Yeah. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, look, um, I've seen people lie about Muslims, lie. Uh, in fact, Christians too, supposed nominal Christians and atheists and all sorts of people lie about what's in the, the, the books of Islam and then lie and say that those books aren't important. You know, once when they can't refute them, they say, well, those books are irrelevant. And then they talk about there's no orthodoxy and it's, it's just all See, now he's making ridicule jokes uh jesse smollett you know and the, and then he said jesse you're jesse smollett's uncle i mean when they can't deal with facts they go sideways and make uh, ridicule smollett's comments aunt is kamala harris what's that jesse smollett's aunt is kamala harris is it really yes that's interesting i mean Look, the thing is, obviously, look, they're obviously trying to get a rise out. And this is when people don't have facts, don't have citations. If they, if they knew a thing about Islam, they'd be doing a show on it. He says he's being a smart ass. So, anyway. Yeah, I know. Why we, I know. It's just, man, it's been Yeah, well, we were hoping we would have an intelligent Q&A tonight. That's what, you know, we went overtime for tonight was to have a good uh, Q&A. But Handsome Truth, Jonathan, please do research it. I hope you do. Um, this is the... 
last episode of the series on Islam, and then, of course, we start uh, Judaism next week or the week after, depending on how things go, and if uh, the power gets turned on at the new house. This is the last show in the kitchen, folks, or at least this one, anyway. So, uh, you know... Is, he, uh, is Kamala your sister, your wife, or both, Lloyd? You know, it's, it's odd. Ilana Omar married her brother so she could get residence in the country. And she's she's known to be associated. My with my, my birthday starts in five hours, folks. So stop with your. I I want to have a decent birthday tomorrow. Let's throw some super chats okay. for my birthday before we say goodbye, folks. Come on, be nice. Th- show some love. Thanks everybody okay, for the support too. What'd okay. you say? Well, no, for those who, if anyone would like to support me, because I do put a lot of hours into this. Um, Yun did provide my PayPal email, ldyong underscore pl at outlooks.com. Yeah, but you That's post it up there again for people to donate for the support. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Mr. Winners. Thanks, uh, everybody. Sorry, I don't celebrate Hanukkah. I'm a Christian. Uh, thanks, ha- uh, Yin Yang, for the happy birthday. Thanks, everybody. Uh, Uncle Bingo, Daryl Bray, everybody. Thanks, uh, Free WT, all of you. Much appreciated. Uh, You know, it's always good when you wrap up a long series like this, too. I mean, it's like, (laughs) but yeah, we have a three-part new series that'll end up seven or ten episodes, so look forward to that. (laughs) Thanks, uh, Amy James. It was good uh, messaging or emailing with you the other day. Uh, He says, I hate your guest. Well, you know, study his research before you hate somebody. That's kind of silly. He's just challenging you and you feel threatened, so don't. Just go where the facts go. Don't be threatened by them. It's, it's, that's silly. So yeah, I've just added my PayPal email address in there. Thank you guys. And um, he says, uh, uh, yeah, Free WT says well, to tell you thanks. He's reading it too. And there's his uh, email if you would like to donate for all the research he's been doing for these uh, series. And we do plan on putting some uh, t-shirts up soon. I hope to get that going very quickly here. And uh, thanks, Candor. Always uh, good to see you in there. And uh, anyway, I think this is probably a good place to wrap it up. I don't see anybody with any more questions. Yeah, but the discussion around what's the my real to- name, not my crypto name. Sorry, Jan Irvin is my real name. That's been out there for many years. That's pretty ridiculous. Yeah. Tell your guest uh, the seed of Cain. I will check out his word. See, now you're the seed of Cain. I mean, just like insults. Good grief. Interesting. (laughs) (laughs) Handsome Truth feels seriously threatened by you, dude. You know, that sucks. That's too bad. Anyway, I hope he does study this whole series in depth because he'll have a real eye opener and then he'll have to focus on more than just one group. So, yeah. uh, and this person, 108, doesn't trust me for saying my real name is Jan Irvin. Why would I say Jan Irvin? I mean, you know, the most, you know, you know, in English it's Jan, like, you know, it's a Scandinavian name. Why would I pick that when it's so easy to make fun of? It's like, you know, it's just stupid. Watch, it's got to be a, it's probably a troll account. Let's see here if that's a troll account. Yeah. Yep. Definitely a troll account. One subscriber. That's how you always know they're trolls. Bye bye. Uh, so uh, Lloyd, be well and God bless. The gift for the matzo bowl soups in the mail. However. Thanks everybody for the happy yeah, birthdays. Thanks. thanks for the donations and super chats. Much appreciated. And uh, if we can't, if we don't see you next week, we'll see you the week after that. And uh, see you all soon. Good night, everybody. Take care. Take care, everyone. Good night. Thank you.